Welcome. So uh, this question says that a block moves because it has a kinetic energy of 14 joules. Remember, if you have kinetic energy, you must be moving. And if you're moving, you must have kinetic energy. Uh, how much kinetic energy would another block have if it was three times the mass and moved at twice as fast? So this is a, a, a typical ratio problem. Let's just visualize it a little bit. We have a we have a block and it's moving and it's got a certain velocity and it's got a certain kinetic energy and the kinetic energy is equal to 14 joules and then we don't know the absolute values for the for the mass and the and the uh, um, speed but we know in a second situation we have another block and we're going to call this this is going to have different values and it turns out it's got three times uh, it got twice the the as fast so rather than that we could call that 2v if you like and it's got three times the mass so i could call that m and 3m just to visualize it and if i know those ratios between how the mass changes and how the velocity changes the implication is i should be able to work out what the new kinetic energy is so there's my visualization and the first step is always I need to work out, re recall a relationship that links these different parameters and the obvious one is that kinetic energy equals one half times the mass times the velocity squared. And so I'm going to you know, have to work with ratios and <coughs> it's not that this is hard, it's just that there's, uh, uh, it's easy to get things upside down and backwards. So I think layout is important here. So the layout that I find most helpful is I, is I do a ratio and I say, well, my new kinetic energy, let's call it K nu, over my old kinetic energy is equal to, well, my new kinetic energy is a half times the new mass times the new velocity squared and my old kinetic energy is a half times my old mass times my old velocity squared. So the rest is filling in really. My new kinetic energy over, and I know my old kinetic energy was 14, is equal to, well, it's a half. Uh, let's just put those away. They both have a half in them. Now let's think about our masses. And I don't know what either mass is, but I know that the new one is three times bigger than the old one. So you could put down 3m and 1m, but frankly I find it easy just to say, look it's three times bigger. So let's just call this 3 and 1. Yeah, I could have said 6 and 2, or 3 quarters and 1 quarter, or, you know, 556 and a third of 556. As long as the ratio is 3 for the new to 1 versus the old, it's going to work. Um, and then in terms of the uh, uh, um, velocity, we're moving twice as fast. So let's put down, let's call the new one 2 and the, new, and the old one 1. Now, uh, it's as long as it's two times as big. Now, I have to remember that I square both of those. And so this equals, well, I can kind of get rid of the halves. They're just going to cancel out. Everything on the bottom is going to equal one. So that's going to be equal two twos are four, three fours are 12. So 12 over one. So that means that my new kinetic energy is equal to 12 times, and this is where people tend to, they get so wrapped up here that they forget about the, the fact that they have the old kinetic energy. In fact, they even forget the old kinetic energy. And they give me an answer of 12 joules, which is, which is not right. It's going to be 12 times whatever the old value was, and the old value is 14. So my new kinetic energy is equal to, well, 10 14s is 140, 2 14s are 28. Add those together, I get 168 jobs is my answer.
So that's the that's the route. Yeah. So the approach, the approach is I visualize the new circumstances and the old circumstances. And then I think of the relationship that links the different parameters I have. I do a formal layout of a ratio. So the new kinetic energy over the old kinetic energy. And then I plug in what I know. And I do know the old kinetic energy. And although I don't know absolute numbers for the old or new velocity or the old or new mass, I do know the ratios. And it's a little bit uncomfortable to begin, to begin with, but people, you know, with practice, people get used to saying, well, it's three times bigger, so I'll call it one and three. It's two times as fast, so I'll call it one and two. It's just the simplest ratio which will uh, uh, carry the information. Uh, I'm a little bit careful with my math because I don't want to make a slip by just, you know, forgetting the squares. That would be uh, a, a problem. And I do have a little warning belt in my head because I know from experience the most common mistake people make once they've grasped this is that they just don't write that 14 down they're so intent on getting the new they do all this work and they never write down over k old they're not complete up here and so they don't put the 14 in and so they end up with the incorrect answer again it's, it's attention to detail it's writing things down completely, it's thinking in complete sentences, and then you let the math take care of itself. So there we have it.